Our next guests are credited with two of the ideas on Toronto Life's list of 25 ideas that are changing the world. They've come up with a process for repairing heart tissue damaged by heart attacks and a device that can read the minds of children who can't communicate. They are Tom Chow with Toronto Bloorview Kids Rehab and Melitza Radisic, Assistant Professor with the University of Toronto's Institute of Biomaterials and Biomedical Engineering. It's a long title, but to do what you do, wow, pretty impressive. And congratulations, by the way, on making the list. Thank Tom, you. tell me about, because you've bought this in, mm -hmm. um, tell me about how this literal mind reader works. Okay, this actually is a fairly simple device. Uh, what we do is we deliver light to the brain. Okay. So we use fiber optic cables. And then we measure how much light comes back. And the principle basically is that any tissue that's active requires oxygen. And the protein that delivers oxygen is hemoglobin. So when we see hemoglobin that's connected to oxygen, um, we know that it absorbs light of a certain wavelength. And simply by measuring the light that comes back, we can infer what the level of activity is of the lying tissue. And, and who would you use this on? Like where would it be helpful? So we conceived this idea of mainly for children and youth with severe disabilities who are cognitively capable, so they understand what's going on in the environment, they have opinions, they have preferences, but they can't communicate them. They don't have any physical communication. So that's where we conceived this kind of technology for, for these particular population. And how fast does it work? I mean, once you get that on and you send the, the waves in, mm -hmm. how fast will you get the information back that you're looking for? It'll take a couple of seconds, so that's about, about four or five seconds before we can decode what's going on. Yeah. And obviously there's no discomfort because there's no invasion. That's right. It's all non-invasive, so just on the surface of the skin, yeah. And Melissa, with you, you've been able to, I mean, in the vernacular, br mend a broken heart, literally, yeah. by growing, and re what was thought of before to be a, an impossible project, yeah. but you've done it. You've been able to regrow tissue. Yeah. Explain that. So this is what we use. We would take a piece of collagen sponge, and it's highly porous, so we can see it here, uh, and this would be our scaffold that supports the cells while they are connecting into real functional tissue. So we would seed this scaffold with cells, and then we would place it in an electrical stimulation chamber. And you can see an example here. I want to so hold that these, up to camera so they can yes. see it at home. I'm just going to... Yeah. So these uh, black rods are actually rods that provide electrical stimulation. Mm -hmm. And using these tiny wires, we would connect them to electrical stimulator that provides pulses similar to those found in the real heart. In healthy tissue? In healthy tissue. And we would pulse the tissue in the lab for about a week. And at the end of it, we have a nice beating piece of tissue. This is astounding. <laughs> when you've been, I mean, obviously it took you some time to get to that point, yeah. but when it finally did what you hoped it would do, yeah. your reaction must have been unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> it's really amazing to see it beat in the lab and, uh, you know, under the microscope when you look at it and you see nice contractions, that's really amazing. You're growing tissue. Yeah. So, so take that to the stage of how you would help yeah. somebody who's had a heart attack. Yeah, so uh, of course uh, it will take some time because there are regulatory constraints about implanting uh, tissues and cells in humans. But the idea is uh, that a piece of uh, scar tissue mm -hmm. that will form after a patient had a heart attack could be either excised by a surgeon or we could just use our patch to pat patch over the scar that's found in the heart. So that's the, our ultimate goal. In the meantime, we also think we can help patients by developing models of diseased heart. So we are thinking now about developing a model of a heart tissue that, that, has was, disease. that has disease, that was, let's say, damaged by diabetes or damaged by high blood pressure, and then use this piece of tissue to learn what drugs could help repair, repair such a hard tissue. That is phenomenal. So I think that will be a more uh, immediate impact of our research and then in the longer term patching will also be possible. Fantastic. Yeah. And Tom, with your um, mind reader, mm -hmm. you've been using it at Bloorview, mm -hmm. predominantly on kids. Do you think we would start to see this in uh, wider use in clinics and hospitals, for example, and you know, for all ages? Well, we certainly would hope so. I mean, right now it's still very much a research prototype at this point in time. But I think with a few years more development, we'll be able to have a portable unit that you can just stick on your head and communicate wirelessly with the computer. Wow. Yeah. Both of them unbelievable. Thank you for Thank coming you. in and sharing your discoveries with us. Up next, gift ideas for your little builder.